Hello guys, Jorgen from Sharp 11 Music here. Today we will be looking at a Paul Desmond Lake of the Week. Actually it's three Lakes of the Week, but it's the same concept he uses over and over a few times so we can really analyze what he's thinking there. I took these licks out of an amazing blues solo he plays on Blue Rondo a la Turk. Live at the Carnegie Hall, that's a great concert. Like Paul Desmond is really on fire, everything he plays is amazing. And there's so much that can be discussed in this solo, the complete solo, frankly. But what I want to show to you is how he imposes the Charlie Parker changes over the blues. The blues for Alice changes on the first part of a blues. As most of you know, I'm quite a Paul Desmond fan. I know a lot of his solos. I really like his sequential and melodic approach to improvisation. And a lot of people also ask me if I knew if he was like into Charlie Parker or not. There is a very interesting biography by Doc Ramsey, I really recommend it, where he has some letters to his father and he explains that he actually has a lot of respect for Charlie Parker, but he really is desperate not to follow the bebop path. But the two had great admiration for each other. As you actually can hear, and there is an interview which is here on YouTube and where Paul Desmond interviews Charlie Parker and it's so sweet, I cannot describe it differently because those two are so humble and apparently even Charlie Parker was really a hard cat to interview, but this one with Paul, uh, Paul Desmond went very well. So check that out, it's really interesting. People can do much more with music than that. It can be very descriptive in all kinds of ways, you know? All walks of life. Don't you agree, Paul? Yeah, and, and you always do have a story to tell. It's uh, one of the most impressive things about everything I've ever heard of yours. Another little anecdote is that they used to play at the same club uh, with the Dave Brubeck Quartet and Charlie Parker on and off nights. And that's like Charlie Parker in the end of his life, his saxophone was really, um, really in bad shape. So sometimes it wouldn't play and he did play some nights on Desmond's horn. So, but let's get to the tone material. <laughs> So this is a very Paul Desmond approach, sequential like always. Um, he works actually beautifully around one main note in every bar. The first one is the F sharp, that's the third in a D blues for alto saxophone. And then he gets to the next bar and then you hear the E as a main note, third bar the D as a main note, and then we get to the C natural, which is the seven of a D7, and which leads perfectly into the G7, which functions kind of as a secondary dominant. So, you hear actually this. So it's a very good Guyton line, it's a very clear one. And how do I know that Paul Desmond is referring actually to the Blues for Alice changes? In the second bar he plays this F sharp. And then he goes on and then... So he plays the third of when you would go for the blues for Alice changes there. So he's very selective with his notes. He doesn't play so many notes, but the notes he does choose are very wise and really impose this kind of harmonic use on it. You really can hear the changes just by this melody, I think at least. <laughs> We also have to be thankful to Dave Brubeck, who is very good in accompanying Desmond. In fact, he's actually just not playing at this moment, which gives a lot of space for Paul Desmond to do whatever he wants, and he takes it with gratitude to put the Parker changes on it. Then of course, after that, we have kind of the same ID. Again, you can hear the same main note, just a little bit of a different melody built around it. Isn't it beautiful? 
I really feel like this should be a new song or so. But look at it again. First bar F sharp is the main note and he works a bit around it. Then the E, then the D, then the C again. This time he works with a chromatic alternating tone from below. So there the second bar is a little bit less obvious that there is a F sharp dominant like there would be in the Parker changes, but still this C sharp and D sharp that are in this bar suggest that, as well as the next bar where we have normally B minor 7, E7 on the Parker changes, he has the C sharp and this D would be a nice guy tone being the minor third of the B minor and the 7 of the E7. And then he just resolutes a little bit different on the D7, also with a flat 9, the E flat, and then to the B. Then the next chorus, he takes the same approach, you've guessed that by now, but he keeps it way more simple and it's so groovy, guys. Check that out. <laughs> And then you can hear say, I think it's Brubeck because it's being picked up by the mic. And I mean, it's not a small club, it's the Carnegie Hall, who says like a very groovy yeah on the two. And then Paul Desmond from that point on is off into amazing lines and some epic blues at the end, really. <laughs> Here again, you can see him outline very clear uh, that line F sharp E D C over the four bars. And the second bar, he's very clear again about this F sharp dominant with this A sharp. So this is an amazing way how Desmond actually took still the bebop language, the chord progression, but he made it his melodic sequential self. Most bebop players would outline way more of the chord tones of that 251 line. <laughs> They would put in way more notes to make sure the audience really hears this harmony. Which is fine, I think, and it, it really can sound cool too. But Desmond could do that with way less notes and that's really amazing. Such statements of melody, really. It gives way more line to your improvisations if you know a little of these concepts that work and then you improvise around them. Uh, still, there's a lot of room with those ideas to improvise on the spot. No problem, but that's just a very solid concept to go about. So guys, I hope this was helpful and you have a little bit of a new way if you even ever did already practice those Parker changes on the blues, just a little bit of a different approach than the normal bebop traditional way of thinking about them. More in arpeggios, of course, here it's more in a sequential way. By the way, these lines I just used come out of a solo transcription, which is on the channel and also part of a Paul Desmond solo transcription book, which is out really new. If you are interested, it's full of great Desmondisms, uh, if I can call it like that, uh, with 15 solo transcriptions. So if you would be interested, you would be supporting the channel and I think it's cool. It's for all major transpositional instruments, so E flat for alto saxophone, B flat for trumpet and tenor, and C instruments for, yeah, any C instrument. So thank you for watching and hope to see you uh, next time with a new Lake of the Week. I've met other young fellows, you know, that come along, if I might say, you, yourself, or... Oh, thanks, Joe. Sure, I've had lots of fun working with you, man. It's a pleasure to know you. <laughs>